We welcome to our microphones <laughs> Jonathan Fred. He stars in Arsenic and Old Lace at the Kennedy Center with that wonderful cast, Larry Storch and Miss Stapleton and Marion Ross. He played Barnabas Collins on ABC's Dark Shadows and performed with Catherine Hepburn in Much Ado About Nothing. Do you like the term character actor? I mean, yours is a face that every, people would see, they'd know it right away. That's, you're the first person that's ever uh, said just that, a character actor. I've been called a Shakespearean actor, and I often wonder why, because I've been in Shakespearean plays, but I never think of myself as a Shakespearean actor. A character actor, yes, that's a nice way to put it. I've been a character actor since I was 16. My first show, uh, play, in prep school, and uh, I was doing Sir Anthony Absolute and Sheridan's The Rivals, and I've been getting younger ever since. <laughs> but the I character started off as the heavies when I was a kid. The good one, though, has to face the life of the good part. They get a lot of work. They're yeah. very good at what they do. The other part is people go down the street and say, I know you. You know, right? Well, I, I find the character parts of the heavies, or whatever you want to call them, are infinitely more interesting than the goody two-shoes, you know. I, right. I, you get I, meteor roles. Yeah, you get you 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 expand more somehow or other. There's more expansiveness in in, the, in playing the, the heavies. Than what the, happened to Dark Shadows? That well, was a it ghostly ran soap. Right? It ran its course. The one thing I realized very early on doing Barnabas Collins is that um, I was a nervous wreck for the first year. I learned very quickly that there's nothing more frightening than a frightened monster. And um, <laughs> I was frightened every day. And, and this glazed look in my eyes lent itself. Like <laughs> so, I mean, here was Barnabas, you know, coming out of his, this character, coming out of a cop, in the, you know, after 150 years. And he's trying to make, m make it in this, you know, the 1900s, 1966 or whatever. And, uh, you know, that's, that's a big, tall order to sort of suddenly... <laughs> get yourself organized in, in a century and a half after you're really <laughs> supposed to be dead. Well, I figured my trying to adapt myself to television, I was in the same boat as Barnabas, so I used it. I oh. used this, my, own, my own terror of the show, you see, uh, you, to, uh, to, to, to work for Barnabas, so it worked. Is it tougher to play a Dark Shadows than Shakespeare? W oh, well, uh, you're talking, it depends on if you, where you're doing Shakespeare. If you're doing it on television, no, Shakespeare would be tougher. Uh, but um, I'll tell you, I relate it to this, this thing I'm in now, Arsenic and Old Lace. In the first two weeks, I was on, in this show with Marion Ross and Gary Sandy yeah. and, and, and Larry Storch and myself all came into it in December. And we, had to, we, open, we had our tryout in New York for the big time on the, on, on the road, <laughs> so we'd reverse the whole thing. But I was a nervous wreck the two weeks in New York, like I used to be on Dark Shadows, because I wasn't ready, really ready. When I got to Washington after a week in Louisville and a week in, in New Haven, I really began to enjoy it. Now I'm just having a ball. Uh, I would with Shakespeare, I would with Dark Shadows, I would with anything if I had the time. Who do you play in Arsenic? Uh, I play Jonathan Brewster. Uh, he is the black sheep of the family. He's, it's, it's a kind of Barnabas send-up is what it is. <laughs> it's Barnabas in a comic situation, uh, in a sense. Why is this revival of this old play that uh, everyone knows is the Cary Grant movie doing so well? Well, I can say it in two words, Jean Stapleton. I, I look upon her, I know she would like this, but I call her the Queen Mum of America. She's a charming lady, and uh, I have total respect for her. And my, the director, uh, in a couple of instances in the show, has got me really being a menace, and a menace to her. And you know, it's hard work to do that. I, I have to really put her down. And to do this to Jean Stapleton, this lovely, charming, innocent, sweet lady, it was, <laughs> it's sort of hard for me to do it. But the play holds up, too, doesn't oh, it? Oh, it holds up. Sure, it holds up. It's, it's, I, I've never, I have, in all my life, in all the comedies I've been in, I've never seen such waves of laughter all night long. It, when the audience doesn't laugh at a joke, it's because they're exhausted. They haven't got enough of energy to laugh all the time. Comedy harder to play? Yeah, well, it's it, but it's the test. It's it's no, it's not necessarily harder, but it's it's it's, it's more interesting uh, than playing seriously. Why? Well, because you're with the audience all the time. When they're responding to f to humor, 
they're more vociferous than they are when they're responding to something tragic or sad. They don't express themselves. I mean, they don't cry out loud, but they laugh out loud. Why do you like, uh, you've spent a life being other people, right? Mm -hmm. Why do you like that? Oh, I love it. Henry so, Fonda told yeah, me once yeah. it's, it's, that he could not wait to be Mr. Roberts at 8 o'clock. When it was 3 o'clock in the afternoon, he'd look at his watch and wish it would go faster yeah. so he could be Mr. Mm -hmm. Roberts. I can understand that. Sure. Uh, I, I think th this is where I'm more in the tradition, too. I think of my, I guess, my British training, because I went to the Royal Academy and I used to do stock around the country in England. And uh, English actors love to disguise themselves more than American. More American actors tend to want to play themselves out. And it's interesting you say that about Fonda, that... Uh, Yes, he was a, as much a, he was about I guess as much as any American actor gets a character actor, but most Hollywood people they tend to I mean the Clark Gables of this world for example you know they uh, they exploited themselves. For instance, Clark Gable never played a Southerner in Gone with the Wind. Interestingly enough, he never did a he never did a Southern accent. He played Clark Gable. Right. And uh, that's English. what I mean by Americans. No, I'm not putting Americans down for that reason, but English actors. Uh, to, to like to disguise themselves. Americans love to play themselves, or the Lawrence Olivier's of this world wanted to get behind something. And I remember when I started off in the theater as a young kid, I, the more whiskers I could put on, the happier I was, you see, disguising myself. And I've always loved disguises. But is it a kind of hiding of insecurities? I think to, well, yes, yeah, so who hasn't got an insecurity about them? You know, we're all insecure in certain respects. Well, there's a recommendation how many psychologists say that shy people or withdrawn people should take drama courses. Sure. Whether they intend to be on the stage or not. I know myself, when I was 16, and I, and I, I remember I went begging to, to play in the senior play. Usually they drafted the top five people in the, in the two upper classes that were the smartest. And they always had to be in the place. I wasn't that smart. I was like halfway down the class list. But anyway, I went and asked. Nobody had ever done this before. Other than before that, I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. I had no idea. And suddenly, I, I was this incredible voice in this play. And, uh, and I didn't know I was going to go professional then, but at least I had an uh -huh. anchor. I had an anchor in life. And it was, a, it was the greatest moment of my life. You're making me want to act made me want to act. It was more, much more satisfying than anything I've done since. It <laughs> changed my whole life. All right, now you never get, when you're standing backstage before you make the entrance, it, it never happens where you say, oh, I gotta be him again. Oh no, N not with me, ever. Not uh, ever? Really, well, I mean, like, t that's t tonight I was kidding one of the actors that, oh, I'm getting, one of the actors who'd been with the show from the very beginning, and I said, I'm catching up with you. I'm now settled in, I'm now reaching that point where it's becoming a little bit routine. And I said, this is where I have to go to work. And so I give myself something new each night to think about, a new angle on something. You have to, or you, or you, you. That happens, I went backstage at the Kane Mutiny and <coughs> they'd been doing it, I guess, eight months. Mm -hmm. John Rubenstein and Michael Moriarty. And they're mm -hmm. backstage and they were saying things like, you know that thing you did tonight? Let's work on that a little tomorrow, which exactly. you do with your hand. Sure, sure, now, they're sure. doing the same lines, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's just a little business. Yeah, that's right. Or, or, or a little private thought of your own. But we were doing it tonight. Larry Storch and I are constantly doing this all the time. Uh, let's hold it here a little bit. Let's wait for this or do this or do that. And uh, sometimes actors say after five months, of course this is what this scene's all about. How dumb could I be? <laughs> And, of course, this is the marvelous moment when you realize how stupid you've been. What was it like to work with uh, Kate Hepburn? Well, she was something very astonishing and very special. Uh, I've worked with a lot of, of, I guess, over the years, I've worked with a good many stars. And, uh, but Hepburn stands out, of course. She's um, very hardworking. Uh, she is... She's fabulous all the time. She's fabulous off stage and on stage. Have you worked with Olivier? No. Right. Oh, I wish I had, but no, I haven't. Now, why do so many actors want to? Well, just so you can brush up against the greatest. Uh, you want to be, the, in order, oh. you want to be around better performers. Oh, of course. Sure, sure. I mean, he's been my idol all my life, really. Tony Randall told me he'd swim the ocean to work with him for oh. nothing. 
Well, if I could, I would, but I don't think I'd make it. <laughs> <laughs> Not at my age, anyway. But, oh, I'd, I'd give anything to work with. Would that. you do a television series again? Oh, sir. Uh, Character uh, actors will always want to work. Oh, sir. I mean, I mean uh, I'd like... Uh, by the way, what I'm into right now, uh, my ultimate goal right now, is to do something that will give me no m big money at all, and it's going to be a hard work for me, and it's going to be uncomfortable, but it's my one-man show called Jonathan Fritz Fools and Fiends, which I'm working on. I have already started a college tour. It's been interrupted by this tour. Fools and Fiends. Uh, fools and Fiends. And it's, uh, it's short stories, a Stephen King story, a, a, a Edgar Allan Poe wow. story, and an Irwin Shaw story. Uh, Great idea. A, a William F. Nolan story mixed with some poetry of Ogden Nash, Eve Miriam, and then my own commentaries through it. Thank, we're out of time. Thanks, John. Larry, great pleasure meeting you. Great pleasure. Jonathan Fred, ladies and gentlemen. He's in arsenic and old lace at the Eisenhower.